In this video, I'm going to dive into how to automatically generate proposals and contracts from SmartSuite to Google Docs with me. This same process can be replicated in Airtable and other databases as well. Even if each sale in your business is very unique and customized, there's likely a lot of duplicate information such as dates, company names, contact info, and other data. Check this out if you want to save time in your document, contract, and proposal creation. Welcome to our channel. My name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business processes and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, please visit our website below to book a free console. In this video, what we're going to do is we are going to take a set of data. So a proposal within our smart suite solution, and we're going to move that data and pass all the required variables into our templated proposal that we have created within Google Docs and using make that information will be passed in. It will create a copy of that template and then it will pass the link back into our proposal table. And that way it will just streamline the proposal creation process because we already have the data that exists within our CRM or wherever you store your customer and proposal information. So in my case, I'm using smart suite. If you don't have an account, you can set one up. There's a link in the description below to get started. Again, you can replicate the same process with Airtable or other CRMs as well. I'm using SmartSuite. So to get started here, you will need a contacts table. Probably already have one set up in your CRM platform, wherever that may be. In SmartSuite, if you do not have one created, you can create one fairly simply. I've just got the basic information to get us started. Within Smart Suite, I've got a contacts table and we've got a number of fields here. This is a full name field. So this is our contact, the company we're working with. We have a status and here's the different options that I have set up. I've got the company name, I've got the contact email address, and I've got the company address. And that's all I have to get us started. And then I also have a field that is a linked record field, and it's just linking to the proposal table. More than likely, in your case, you're going to have more information than this on the contact, but this is just base information to get started. And once you can get a few of these fields flowing from the contacts table into your proposal and then into your proposal document, it's just much of the same information being repeated. So from here, we can navigate into our proposal table. This one's a little bit more in depth, so I will go through it a little bit more clearly here. But again, create a new table from scratch. I've got a status with a few different options here. You can add whatever you want, but I just have pending proposal, ready for review and sent. Then I have a button field and I will show you how to set that up shortly. I've got a proposal doc link. This is going to be left empty. What's going to happen is once our make automation scenario fires, there will be a link that gets created in Google Docs. It gets passed back here so we can easily reference it later on. Then I just have a proposal date, project name, details. This one is just a text area field. And that's details of our proposal or the services or work that we're doing for the company that we're sending this proposal to. We've got a completion date, which is just a date or a due date field. In this case, we've got a project budget, which is a currency. This is linking back to the contacts field, all fairly straightforward. Then I'll go into these ones a little bit more detailed. So this is a company. I've labeled it company or company name. It's a formula field and I'll click into it. So I'm using the function array unique. I'm looking into the links to contacts field, and then using dot notation, I'm pulling in the company name back to it to display company name here. And then basically each of these are the same. So I've got contact name, again, doing the same thing, dot notation, pull the full name back in, email address, and then I've got the company address. This is a little bit different because the company address does not seem to flow nicely into the proposal. I've created a formula that is creating it as a text field, and then it's just looking up address. And then it's so basically the text function is just converting it to text only. And then I have another formula 
is just simply record ID. Go ahead, pause this video and get your solution set up. Again, contact and proposal table, and then we can get rolling. From here, what we are going to do, I've got some sample data already entered. I can click into, I've got my Google Drive here, and then a template set up. This is going to look different for you, obviously. There's probably going to be a lot more information, and if it's multiple pages, that is fine. To get us started, I just simply have our template set up here, and then any variable, so that could be the company name, the proposal date, email address, details, budget, so on. You're going to wrap that within the double curly brackets. As you can see here, I've got the proposal for company name, date, address, contact name, and so on. Pretty self-explanatory. So if you have a proposal already created somewhere as a document, go ahead, set it up within Google Docs and make a copy of it, label it, whatever you want. And then any variable, uh, you can just wrap in the double curly bread. So from here, we can then navigate into the, the make.com, go ahead and set up an account. You can have two scenarios for free and then to get started, it's also like nine bucks a month for the starter package. So that's fairly cheap as well for the amount of automation that it creates for us. So go in, create a new scenario and uh, you can name it whatever you want. And the first thing that we're going to do to get started is we are going to a webhook. So when I select the add new module, you may need to search it as well. You could just type in webhook and it will filter and be at the top. Create a new custom webhook. Create a webhook. We can name it whatever we want. I'll click save. And I'll just copy the address to the clipboard. So it's just taking in this address here and I'll click OK. So we just need to quickly navigate back into SmartSuite. We'll go into our button field and scroll down to the URL formula and we'll edit the formula. So what I have done is I've just created an if statement for the purposes of if the status is equal to proposal, then the button will be clickable. Otherwise, I don't want to be able to accidentally click it. And then I'm concatenating that URL. So I'll just paste in this new one here. And I am using a question mark here to add a new parameter. The parameter is rec or record. And then I'm assigning the value to that parameter as record ID. So that when that button is clicked, it is going to create a new scenario for us, or it's going to fire and run that scenario for us and pass record ID to it so that we can and our other steps and modules. So I'll click apply, and update that, and I'll just flip this to proposal and you can see that this button is clicked. So I'll go back to the scenario here. I'm going to add a new module and this module is going to be in Smart Suite. So select Smart Suite. You will probably have to connect and authenticate your account. It's really easy. Click on Smart Suite and log into your Smart Suite account. Again, if you're doing an Airtable, log into Airtable account or whatever platform or CRM you're using, and then we can use get a record. So let's like get a record. Once it finds our solutions, then I can just type in proposal automation, which is the name of my solution. I'm going to select the proposal table. I'm going to search by a field. And that's going to be the record ID. So this is the formula field with the function record ID that we created. And then the search value, I am just going to add a one in there for the time being, click OK. And then I just need to fire this webhook. So I'm going to right click on it, run this module only. And now it's looking for us to press the create proposal button. We can see it's been accepted and it has passed the record ID of this record here. So now we can click back into the module, scroll down to the search value. We'll backspace out the one and we'll just pass in the record variable. Select okay. Now, when we fire this and select the button within SmartSuite, 
it will pass up record ID to the webhook module, and then it will pass that variable into Smart Suite, and it will just go find this record here and the associated data. Now, what we can do is that we have all of the data required we want to pass into our proposal document template. We can click add another module, go into Google Docs, search for it, select Google Docs, same as Smart Suite, log into your Google account, go through the authentication process. There will be a create a document from a template. We're going to select it and we're going to leave those as is. And then the document ID, we're just going to go search for our font. So I'll select it. I'm just going to type in demo as I've got it stored in the demo folder and select this. And once it finds the proposal template, I will select it as well. So this is our document that we are creating the template from. And now what it's done is company name, proposal date. These are all variables, placeholders within our proposal template. So it's found anything that's been wrapped in a curly bracket and it's brought it back into this module. So we can simply map the data that's found from our smart suite module into the Google Docs template. I'll just quickly go in and map all this information and then uh, we can move on to the next. For a few of these, if I just mapped the dates across, it's going to give you some kind of funky ending with the date and time. So we want to actually format those dates. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on this button here, which is just the date and time section. And then I want to just go click format the date. And then on the left side of the semicolon, I'm going to map in the proposal date. And then as you can see here, it gives us our different date format options. I'm going to format it as month, day, and year. So I can just basically copy that exactly and type it in here. So I'm going to go month slash day slash year. And there should be one, two, three, four Y's for the year. So that looks good. I'm going to copy that one go down to completion date, paste it in there, and then I am going to get rid of this proposal date and add in the completion date, date field. So there's that part done. And then the project budget, I'm first going to add a dollar symbol because it's just going to pass it in as a number. I'll add the dollar symbol, and then I will add in the project budget variable. So that's now entered. Title can be whatever you want. I am just going to go by company name, and I will also pass in the I'll go proposal date. So I'll show you here what I mean by it will show up as kind of a funny extension as the time because I won't format that date. And then we can select our location. So the location I want, I want to pass it back to my demo folder. And the last thing I want to do is again a smart suite module. We're going to update a record. I'll go select my solution and I will have to select the table. I'm going to update. So I need to select them here and I'm going to pass in this record. So I want to update the same record where we got the information from, from status. I want to change it to ready for review and scroll down to the bottom the proposal doc link. We're going to pass in the link that goes and finds the document that we just created. So I'll select it and I will type in URL in the search bar up here. Maybe it's called link in Google Docs. So I'm going to use this web view link. So it passes the link back to this field here so that when I click it, it will open up document directly within Google Docs. I can select OK. I will save the scenario and now we can test it. I'm going to run this once. I'm going to go in and select the create proposal button and we're going to see what happens. So everything's showing up green. It looks like everything was successful. I'll go back into smart suite, it switched our drop down from proposal to ready for review. It's added this link here. And so I will select that link now and you can see, as I had mentioned, I didn't format the proposal date time in the title. So that's how it would show up if you did not do that, but it passed in the company name and then it changed all of the variables, the company name, date, address, contact name, 
contact, email, so on, to the data that we have showing within our solution in Smart Suite. So basically our CRM, and it's passed all the dates that we've asked it to, the details of the project, project name, and completion date. Now that's just a very basic setup. You can add additional modules and make it do additional things. So you could use something like a webhook response module. Show you what that looks like here. So you can use the webhook response to perform different tasks. You could actually close the window that populates when we click that create proposal button. Now you can have it redirect to this web view link directly so that it automatically opens up our proposal for us so we can review it. We could add additional modules actually downloads the document in PDF format. So if we're confident that there isn't any changes that we're going to want made, we could just download that PDF and then upload it back to a field that we create within our CRM or smart suite solution automatically send out that PDF proposal. There's a lot of different scenarios and workflows that we could do, but this is the basics to get started to automatically create those proposals and those contracts to save us a lot of time on the duplicate entry of information. I know I've spent a lot of time previously making the exact same proposal or very, very similar proposals over and over again, when I already have the information, company name, email, all that type of data already existing within my CRM. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get more tutorials in the future.